Hello and welcome to Dwarf Fortress for Dummies 2012 Part 4. So in the last episode we started taking a look at some of the different ways you can get food for your dwarves. So to kind of touch back on the whole idea of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, um, we, we really covered most of what you need to stay alive in the previous one. So food is a big part of it, and of course keeping most of your blood and organs inside your dwarves body uh, is going to be a big part of it. So what makes dwarves happy? That's kind of the next part. Happiness is really important because if your dwarves get too unhappy, one of several bad things can happen. Um, or one bad thing can happen, which can usually lead to many more bad things. Let's go quickly take a look at Dwarf Therapist again. I'm going to connect here. So if you mouse over the happiness column here, you can see what their current happiness is. You can see this in the game as well, but this is probably the easiest and quickest way to see it. Now, this only kind of gives us a qualitative, uh, you know, or rather quantitative. It only gives us a number associated with the happiness. But to get some more kind of details on what your dwarves are uh, unhappy with, you have to go dig a little deeper. No pun intended. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to bring up your list here, and then you can go in by pressing, I believe, View Creature here, V. Now you can press Enter for Thoughts and Preferences. So here, this will give you a little bit of insight into what has pleased or displeased your dwarves recently. So this person has been content lately. She slept without a proper room recently. So if you recall, we have a dormitory. She doesn't have her own bedroom, so this is one thing that we can improve. She was forced to talk to someone annoying lately. Well. We can't do much about that now, but if we find out who that annoying person is, maybe we could arrange a little unfortunate accident for them. She's complained about lack of chairs lately. Well, we literally have no chairs, so that's easy enough to fix. We just build some up. She's been caught in the rain recently, so this is a result of her going outside. Eventually, you can get away with not uh, going outside at all, but for right now, I kind of need to get stuff from outside. I need to get wood from outside and uh, fish and things like that. But once you get to a certain point in the game, you probably won't ever need to go outside again. That being said, it's not a terrible idea to have dwarves that are accustomed to going outside for reasons that I'll get to later. Now, let's see what else. Here's some just kind of fluff stuff here um, and some details on uh, her appearance. But here, this green text tells a little bit about things that she likes. So this stuff is kind of less important, more trivial likes. but you know, if you know these things, then, you know, maybe you can put, if you see that, for instance, she likes uh, orthoclase, right? If you run into some orthoclase, and then you put uh, an orthoclase cabinet or something in her bedroom, she'll probably be very happy. Black bronze, milk opal, willow wood, you know, all different kinds of materials and things like that. And she ap absolutely detests flies. So, if you recall, the reason that we put that butcher shop in its own little room was that, uh, so that fl flies wouldn't infest the rest of the fortress. So this person, because they absolutely, or dwarf rather, because they absolutely detest flies, is going to get extra bad thoughts from being around flies. So important that we don't get her near them. Um, and then this is just kind of other fluff stuff. But so yeah, so what can we do to make our dwarves happier? So the first thing is going to be getting them more proper rooms. And that's pretty straightforward. So this is a good time to introduce you to the idea of quality of uh, rooms, uh, you know, accommodations. Now, dwarves like to be surrounded by stone. So while I could easily dig out some rooms here in this loamy sand, it would be better if I went down a few levels into actual stone and dug some out down here. So somebody nicely pointed out to me that when I designated this, I actually designated to mine, not to make up down staircase so thank you whoever that was and I will just go ahead and change that now so that my guys will dig down. You know what? I'll just do the 3D mode so I'll do this Oops. there that ought to do it fix that issue so what I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and specify some stuff to get dug out here and we'll make bedrooms so uh, there's actually this is metal here and this is limonite Limonite is an iron ore, and it also tastes really good in gin. So we can do stuff with that. Uh, I'll get to that more when I get into the economy section, but um, 
We can recover some of this later, but I'm just going to make a quick little block of bedrooms off of a little hallway here. So I'll just dig that out, and then bedrooms, uh, you know, it's I ideally you would have them not be like one by two. That's pretty cramped. So the way I usually do is I do these kind of little kidney-shaped rooms like so, and just make a couple of them. I'll make a few extra because we'll eventually get some migrants, and migrants will want a place to sleep as well. And we want them to be comfortable because we want them to be happy. So now that I've got a few of these dug out here, or designated, we can get these rooms built up. So in order for something to be considered a bedroom, it's obviously got to have a bed in it. And we want it to have a door too, because doors um, are going to make it easier to, for one, define what, uh, how big the bedroom actually is uh, when, we def when we use the interact with the building on the bed to define the size of the room. But also, doors give dwarves happy thoughts. Having a bedroom with a door is better than not having a bedroom with a door. So I'll pause for a bit and let this stuff get dug out, and then we will proceed to the furnishing. Okay, so I've got this area dug out, and it looks like it's going to be really nice. There's lots of um, you know metals and things in the wall, so it's going to be a nice, really high-quality bedrooms once I smooth all this stone. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention before I go on is a couple, a little bit of errata from uh, previous episodes and uh, things that I have done also. Um, so let me just cover a couple of those real quick. One of the things I did to improve efficiency of my farming operation is I built a couple more fields. Um, each field has a different type of crop selected. So that should give me a better variety of crops. I've only got one farmer now, but once I get my first migrant wave, I can dedicate one or two more dwarves to farming full time. And then the other thing I did was I changed stockpile settings to do to accomplish a couple things. Thinking back to when I had those nest boxes uh, built, if you recall, I mentioned that you would have to go in to your oops your kitchen tab and basically forbid uh, eggs from being cooked. So since I didn't have any eggs at the time, I couldn't do that, but I can do that now. So I'm going to go ahead and toggle these off so that they won't be cooked. Um, I want them to hatch a couple of these first, and then I'll set them to cook. But the other thing I did, um, just as important, is I went into my food stockpile, and I made it so that eggs would be forbidden in the stockpile, because otherwise what will happen is they're still going to be considered a food source, So even if you have them set not to be able to cook. So your dwarves will go out, grab them out of the nest boxes, and bring them in here to your food stockpile. So, what I did was, uh, I press, I interacting with the stockpile here with Q, and then if you see right here, I have this option, change settings, S. So I can come in here, and I can choose which types of foods to allow or disallow. So this was originally permitted, so if I press P, I can re-permit all of these eggs, but all I had to do was cursor over this, and then go here, F, for bid eggs. Now, eggs are not allowed in this stockpile. And the other thing I did was, if you recall outside here, this hive was not getting built before. That was because I realized that I did not have a dwarf with a beekeeping labor enabled. So what I did was I came in, and I enabled beekeeping on a couple of my dwarves so that it would get built. And then I was saying there's two options that you'll have to choose when you build a colony. One of them you leave alone, the other you change. Um, by default, it looks like this. So install colony when ready. So it either requires a wild colony, which your dwarves will track down, or an existing hive. And then you've got this other option. Uh, sorry, that one you want to leave alone. So leave it to install colony when, when ready. The other choice is do not install colony. Obviously, we want to install colony because otherwise we won't get any of that sweet, sweet honey. Then we've got gather any products as G, requires a colony and requires a jug. We don't want to gather it yet. Uh, we want to save the colony for a split. It's not ready to be split because there's no colony in here, but once we get one, then we can split it, build another hive, and install half of the hive in a new box. Once we get a few going, three, four hives going, then we can start harvesting that honey. And that is going to be sweet. Literally. So that brings us up to speed. So I don't have enough beds 
for the uh, the bedrooms that I just built yet. So I'm going to pause again and get all those beds and doors and things built and we'll get that set up and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, now that we've got beds in a few of these rooms, I'll show you how to make them bedrooms. So similarly to how we made a dormitory, we're just going to interact with the bed with Q, like so. Then we're going to be able to press R to make it a bedroom, just like we did with the dormitory. Um, the main difference is that we are not going to press D this time to turn it into a dormitory. So now it's just a free room. Anybody can come in here and claim it, and they will eventually. However, if you want to manually assign the room to one of your dwarves, which you may want to do but don't have to, what you can do is assign the bed with A. So you press A, and then you just use plus and minus to go down the list, and you can select which dwarf will take the room. For now, I'm just going to let them pick their own rooms. I'm not going to interfere in that decision. So what I will do, though, is just go and make the rest of these bedrooms. All i got to do... Let's do this. Oops, that one didn't have a door. So you see, when I didn't have a door, this one actually is a little too big. So what I can do is resize it by pressing R. And I will just press minus one time, press enter, and now it's the right size. Same deal with this one. And there we go. So I'm still building a few more doors and beds so that I have all of these full. But now, uh, instead of using the dormitory, dwarves can and will come down here and claim their own room at some point. So, on to the next thing. Okay, just going to unpause it here for a second. I got a wave of migrants, so it's a good thing that I had those extra rooms dug out so that these guys have a place to stay. So let's quickly take a look at Dwarf Therapist and see what we got. So I see I got a fishery worker here, which is good because now I don't have to assign the fishing labors to my hunter. I can let him just focus on hunting. So I'll go ahead and commit those changes. Uh, let's see, I got a child, which are basically just a useless mouth to feed, because they only help with little small odds and ends around here, and you cannot assign them any labors. I'm not sure how old they are, but it uh, typically takes uh, anywhere between 1 and 12 years in-game for a child to grow to an adult. So uh, until that time, you can't assign them any laborers, but they'll just run around helping where they can. I may have gotten an additional farmer, so that's nice. Um, let's see, leather worker I did not have before. And a trader. I'm not sure what this guy's good for. Weaver. So probably some of them all rearrange their laborers a little bit. So back to the topic of dwarven psychology. Other things that will give your dwarves happy thoughts. The main ones that come to mind are dining rooms, which I'm in the process of digging right now. I've dug one down here by the living area. And meals. And so I've kind of already covered meals, which are produced at a kitchen. But when you produce meals at a kitchen, you'll notice that you have several options. You have easy, fine, and lavish. Uh, typically, the better the meal, the better, you know, more happy thought that your dwarf is going to get from eating it. So, whenever possible, if you have the resources to do it, I'd suggest making lavish meals. Unless you just don't care about your poor little dwarves. In which case, they can get away with easy meals. Other thing, there, I'm not going to cover all of them, but um, there's other things you can do. You can build statues at your mason, and then you can uh, put them in a room, and then designate that room as a statue farm. Um, dwarves like waterfalls and things like that, so there's creative ways that you can use running water and pumps and things like that to create waterfalls inside your fortress that are relatively safe. Um, and yeah, so that's just the tip of the iceberg. If you have an interest to look at all of the things that can make dwarves happy, I would suggest checking out, checking out that dwarffortresswiki.org. Probably just look up happiness and you'll get a million articles on things that will make your dwarves happy. So. For now, uh, let's just take a quick look and see how our dwarves are looking on the happiness front. It looks like most of them are still content. So that's okay. Once they get a dining room and they start getting happy thoughts from their bedrooms, they're all going to be ecstatic pretty quickly. I'm pretty sure of that. So I'm going to pause for a bit while I get this dining room furnished and everything and uh, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so how to build a dining room. Pretty straightforward. You need a room. Bigger is usually better, and you're going to build a table in it. 
And to do that, you're going to press B for build and T for table. Of course, you've got to construct a table first, and you do that at a masonry workshop. You only need one table to have a dining room, but it's usually better to have more than one. And you're going to want to build chairs, too. Chairs are typically called thrones, which sounds like it'd be a chair for a king, you would think, but it's just, I guess, the antiquated word for chair. So when you build chairs at a masonry workshop, and I will demonstrate that now, they're going to be called thrones. So you see rock tables and thrones. And I usually just build them next to each other. That's the preferred way to sit at a table is to be near it. So once this table comes down here and builds, I will show you how to make this a dining room. Remember that it's not enough just to move a bed into a room. It's not a bedroom when you do that, technically. Or move a table and it doesn't become a dining room. You've actually got to come in and interact with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Q. I'm going to bring the cursor over to one of these tables, and then I'm going to press R for make dining room. And then I just use plus sign until my dining room is as big as I want it. Press enter. Now, the wagon which you came on used to be your meeting hall. I've deconstructed my wagon, so they should have stopped using it as a meeting hall in theory. But now, when dwarves are just idling and they're not sleeping, and they uh, are going to be hanging out somewhere, they're going to be hanging out in your meeting hall. So I'm going to press H. So now this is the dining room, and it's the default meeting area. You don't have to do that, but it's nice because especially when you make your dining room nice by smoothing all this stone, they're going to get happy thoughts from hanging out in here. Also, the reason that it's important to have a sufficient number of tables and thrones or chairs is that they can get negative thoughts. Your dwarves can ne get negative thoughts if there are insufficient tables and chairs to sit at. They'll have a thought that some, says something like uh, they didn't have enough room at the table or there weren't enough chairs or something recently. Okay, so I'm going to wrap up here pretty quickly, but I uh, just wanted to cover a few last things about dwarf happiness. So, you know, it's important to stay abreast of this because if your dwarves get unhappy, the worst thing that can happen for the most part is that they will throw a tantrum. And tantrums are bad because they will go around potentially destroying buildings. They could possibly attack and or kill another dwarf. Uh, it's just all kinds of bad things that can happen. And there's a phenomenon called a tantrum spiral, which occurs when something that a dwarf that's tantruming does affects another dwarf negatively, and then that dwarf tantrums, and so on and so forth. Usually when that happens, that's the end of the fortress. Except in certain rare circumstances, that's going to pretty much spell the end for you. So, um... This is gonna the end of this episode is gonna turn a little bit into a let's play rather than a tutorial because I was gonna highlight a couple of the things that are sort of outside of the theme of this episode, which is happiness, but um, just to show you what I'm doing. So, first thing, when I made this dining room, I started realizing that I had a lot of metals and things uh, in this fortress, which is great because a lot of times you'll get kind of screwed over and you'll embark somewhere where there's hardly any metals, and that sucks. But the downside is that this usually means that you have more wealth. Uh, and the more wealth that your fortress has, which you can actually see here once you have a broker that has the appraisal skill, um, once you start accruing wealth, you're going to start seeing goblin thieves and ambushers and things like this, and eventually, uh, you know, full on goblin sieges and attacks and things. So I want to get some basic security set up. And the first thing I've done is I've set up some traps. Traps are very easily constructed. You need to have a couple of things before you can build them. What you need to do first is build a mechanics workshop. And that is over here. I built it. So to build that, it's B, W, and then the hotkey for mechanics workshop is T. Once you go here, uh, oops, you're going to need to interact with it and add a task to make rock mechanisms. Mechanisms are used to produce traps. They're basically kind of a generic machine component. So any kind of thing that has moving parts is often going to involve a mechanism. So think of it as a spring or a catch or you know a pivot or any kind of thing like that. So the traps, the way that you build them, 
is uh, with B and then capital T for trap and then you've got a few different varieties here and I'll just quickly kind of talk about this um, the ones I've built are the very simplest type which is stonefall trap that basically means when they step on this it's a pressure plate sort of deal that's going to drop a, uh, a stone on their head and it does a fair amount of damage it's a bludgeoning damage you also have weapon traps weapon traps are a little more complicated you can load up to 10 weapons of pretty much any type into the trap and then when something steps on them a hostile steps on them it's going to activate all the weapons at once so some weapons some specialist trap specific weapons like large serrated discs and things like this can actually hit multiple times I believe that a large serrated disc which can be made out of I believe metal and glass uh, can hit up to three times with a with a single attack so if you have the whole thing loaded up you potentially have 30 attacks that's gonna turn a goblin into hamburger it is gonna grind them up uh, the only downside with those particular uh, serrated discs is that it's an edged weapon and it doesn't have very high penetrating capability so if you have heavily armored goblins invading you may just not do a whole lot of damage you have lever which is not tr technically a trap but can be used to do some stuff which I'll cover later in a mechanics episode pressure plate sort of the same deal cage trap cage trap is by far the most overpowered trap and probably the most overpowered building in general in all of Dwarf Fortress. A cage trap can literally trap anything in the game, just about. Um, I can't think of any exceptions except for creatures which cannot be hit by any trap. There are certain creatures which are immune to traps and those creatures obviously can't be hit by them, but like a dragon, no problem. If a dragon steps on a cage trap, you're gonna catch the dragon in a cage trap and hold it for an indefinite period of time until you release it or whatever. Um, upright spears and spikes, which are the bottom thing on here, these are basically just what they sound like. So think Mortal Kombat, the classic pit level with the spikes at the bottom. There you go. Um, if you were to, you know, build, dig a pit and then put some spikes at the bottom, I think you need to have at least like four levels or so of elevation to start having some serious damage, but if you put some spikes at the bottom, yeah, you're gonna really mess some things up. So you could do things like have a drawbridge, um, you know, over your little entryway here with a deep, like a, you know, eight story tall pit, or eight story deep rather, with some spikes at the bottom. And then when goblins start to walk over it, you could pull the lever and plunge them down there, things like that. You can also actually hook the spikes up to a lever or a pressure plate. And this is a technique that is used by some people to create what is called some in some circles the uh, danger room. And I may touch on that more in the military episode, but the basic idea is that you set your military dwarves to train in a room where these spikes keep popping out of the ground. And the spikes that you use are just like training spears, so they do minimal damage but they have the effect of always kind of giving your dwarves a huge workout in terms of uh, dodging and blocking. So that's kind of a fun thing to do and some people consider it an exploit but uh, military, it can be hard to build up experience for your dwarves without uh, you know experience proving fatal in some circumstances so spikes are a good way to get them some some practice quick at their improving their defensive skills. So that's about all the stuff on this level that I've built. I've got some dedicated people down here cooking up meals. I had a ton of chicks hatch. You can see here, I've got a huge number of these things. Some of them I've started culling because I don't want to have too many chickens. I've got a bunch of, um, let's see, yeah, I've, I've already slaughtered some of them, but there's a named guinea hen, which is cool ground dwelling bird, featherless, eats seeds and insects, and it's gigantic. It's uh, This is a pet that belonged to one of the migrants that came. So, yep, I've got my guy in the kitchen here pumping out lavish meals. And downstairs, we'll take a look at how that dining, dining room is coming along. I have started getting somebody to smooth this stone so that the dining room is a little higher quality. Everyone's got their own bedroom. People are happy take a look at Dwarf Therapist right here just to prove my point. Um, if you recall before, I just updated it, if you recall before, everyone was content. Now we're starting to see happy. We're starting to see 
ecstatic. This is good. We want our dwarves to be ecstatic. That is the height of happiness. That is what we're shooting for. We want our dwarves to always be ecstatic. That is the stuff. Alright, so that is pretty much going to wrap it up for this one. Like I said, if you want to know all of the ways to make your dwarves happy, check out the wiki, dwarffortresswiki.org. It's a treasure trove of information, but you've got the basics. You heard it here. Until next time.